Thanks for tuning in. I'm Matt Taylor and on behalf of myself and Pierre, I'm going to run through a series of videos where we first overview and then demonstrate F5's intelligent DNS services platform. Traditionally DNS has delivered something like this. We have multiple devices, some securing, some sharing load around, others doing the actual resolving, and then typically a hidden master where administrative functions are performed. This has worked fine for legitimate users. But malicious attackers more and more have used the uh, deficiencies in DNS uh, to their own ends. Because DNS is primarily a UDP protocol, there's very little session trust established in a transaction between a client and a DNS resolver. Um, and in this end, they're able to cache poison, uh, but they've also been able to use DNS servers as a weapon um, in reflection attacks, but then also attack the DNS server itself. If they take the DNS server and take it offline, that means that for host names, uh, the DNS server can no longer dish out A records. The problem with that is that now the service is not reachable, and so you end up with actual application timeouts. Um, and the result of that is that effectively the customer's web presence is offline. To address this, the traditional way is to buy bigger firewalls, um, bigger load balances, throw in um, much more resolve capability and then also put in out-of-band devices to detect anomaly and do anomalies and do fancy things. The reason they have to do a lot of these fancy things out-of-band is they can't slow down the resolver itself by, by doing analysis of inline traffic. And so we end up with uh, out-of-band devices only seeing a subset of, uh, of, of the real traffic and only a subset of, of actions can actually be performed and most of them are after the fact. So how does F5 address this? F5's premise is that you've got to earn the right to be in the path of the traffic the whole time first. And so let's have a look at what we do first. The first thing we look at is, is what in the supply chain uh, can we actually address? Where is the CPU intensive functions and what capital is actually being spent uh, that F5 could potentially do um, to make the whole supply chain much, much better for legitimate visitors? So what we've done is we've built a whole load of DNS functions within the platform itself. So we've got conditional uh, resolve capability with, uh, with global server load balancing, but also you can transfer zones directly from the hidden master to the F5. Uh, plus we have uh, resolver caching and we have transparent caching. And as well as that, we've noticed that DNSSEC is, uh, is a very CPU intensive task and we can do signing on the fly. So the hidden master doesn't even need to sign records at all. This is very, very analogous as to how we've uh, performed SSL offload uh, for, um, for web traffic and actually earned the right to be in path all the time for that. So once we have those features on the F5, there's actually no need for that bank of uh, resolvers that are typically deployed, and that often pays for the F5 uh, presence itself. Now, F5 is very, very um, scalable in that... Uh, in that with a one AU platform, we can resolve in, in, in excess of a million um, authoritative uh, DNS responses a second. So we have very, very high capacity. With malicious attackers, we are also an ICSA certified firewall. So that means those, those uh, capital intensive firewalls that are in the, in the equation can also be removed. Um, because we have very large session tables, uh, we are a very, very large firewall. So what we're able to do at this point is we're able to absorb a lot of traffic. So we've got, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of uh, query requests per second that we can respond to. Uh, we have massive session tables, so we can, you know, if, if the, the traditional firewall attacks, we can absorb that. Uh, but that also means because we're in path that we can actually detect anomalies and respond accordingly. We think that... Uh, that being able to sit in path, we can very easily look at protocol validation because we have to do that anyway before we perform the resolve. We can look at, at anomalies, whether it's denial of service from single IP addresses or whether it's spread across your whole subscriber base. We have a lot to see. And then we can perform t traditional um, DNS firewall functions as well. So with all that on board, there is no need uh, for an out-of-band uh, detection agent at all. So we've simplified the environment quite substantially. This is what F5 actually does to a DNS traffic flow. I apologize for the eye chart, but let's just talk you through it. When the request first arrives, 
uh, we can actually have a look at the IP address and based on where it's come from or the reputation of that IP address we can make decisions on whether or not to proceed. We then at the transport layer are able to look for anomalies in traffic load. We have a firewall function. Uh, we can also accelerate traffic, even UDP traffic. After that we actually parse the whole protocol, um, the DNS protocol. So we can look at compliance, we can look at fair use policy of the protocol um, records themselves and we can actually uh, deploy contextual based responses as well. So for example, if someone was to send a particular record type like an any, which is typical for a um, reflection attack, uh, we could say that you're not allowed to send any requests, a record types any, on that interface. Unless of course you're administrator and then you'll be fine. After that we can freeform the request so we can change it into anything we want. Then after that we can perform um, DNS sec. So what we look at here is we look at is the request signed? Um, so do we have to look for a signed record? And we can also look for an unsigned record at that point. Behind that we do our conditional um, global server load balancing responses and we can program exactly how we're going to respond that way as well. In behind that was where we actually have our resolver. Now our resolver resolves very, very fast. That's what gives us such a high resolve capability and, and enables us to absorb so many requests. Uh, because that's built into a TMOS path, we respond very, very fast, much faster than if we do a load balancing decision to the back end. In 11.6, um, what we're able to do is we actually have a direct path through to DNS Express and so we can resolve even faster. Behind that sits a cache. Um, this can be a, a resolver cache or a transparent cache. A validating resolver is where it's, uh, it's actually also keeping the DNSSEC key as well. And then behind that, um, if it's not in the cache, we can give hints, we can drop, we can do all sorts of things. Um, but let's look at the case where we actually pass it through to a back-end system actually for a load balancing decision. So from a DNS64 perspective, what we can do is we can, if it's from a v6 client, we can request both an A record and a quad A record. If the quad A returns fine, we return that. After that, we, uh, we do server load balancing towards a DNS pool. Um, now, I guess one of the key things here we're able to do is not only um, do we do pings and, and path checks, uh, from a health monitoring perspective, we can actually generate synthetic requests like A records to check that the actual resolvers at the back end are actually working. On the request at the DNS64, um, if we didn't receive a quad A, if we received only an A record back, then we do the RFC padding um, so we can return a, a, a quad A record uh, with RFC compliant um, DNS64 padding uh, to the response. Uh, if it was a cache miss first off, this is where we'd fill the cache. After that, we're able to modify the response in any way we want. Following that, uh, this is where we marry the other side of the DNSSEC equation. If we've received an unsigned record and they needed a signed record, we can do on-the-fly signing, a very CPU-intensive task. Past that, we can then traffic shape. Um, so if we get a lot of big responses, we could put them in their own, their own rate shape class. Um, so we still had lots of room within our pipe uh, to respond to small with small responses. And then past that, uh, from the IP perspective, we're able to look at the IP reputation of the resolved A record or quad A record and actually decide whether or not that is a bad reputation and do something about that. In 11.6 we have a slightly better approach where we do it on the request side uh, where we actually look for the reputation of the fully qualified domain name that's, that's uh, requested. So as well as what we do, the actual traffic path, uh, we can also use the power of the F5 platform itself. So using the visibility stuff that's built in, we do get analytics and we get logging of DNS capabilities as well. And then as well as that, it's completely extendable. So all the things we've discussed and all the things we're going to show you uh, don't have to be deployed on the F5. They could be in your own portal um, or automation system that sits outside uh, the F5 device. So to the demo itself, uh, this is the environment we're going to run with. 
Uh, we've just got a big IP with all these things going on. Uh, we've got legitimate and malicious users on one side, and then we've got a master DNS infrastructure with a Splunk collector at the uh, syslog collector at the back end. Uh, to deploy uh, all these things, we're just going to use an IAP, which is an F5 template. Uh, we'll do that as opposed to jumping around the box. To generate the traffic, good and bad, we're going to use JMeter. And then on the back end, we're going to use um, uh, the logs in the GUI, as well as custom logs that we've sent to the file system. So we're going to run through, uh, I guess, five areas uh, where we look at server load balancing, visibility and control, and offloading resolver functions. That's very much about buying or earning our right to be in path all the time. And then in three, four and five, around filtering system wide, um, what we're looking at there is the security features of the F5 appliance. So please tune in um, and we'll go through these five areas.